Hey, it's Nick here from Grayscale Gorilla. I thought I'd call up Chad Ashley because I saw a render that, hey Chad, I saw a render that he made and uh, I loved it. So I figured uh, who better to show me how he made it and also teach me some of those little tips and tricks that Chad always does that will help me in all of my renders, not just how to recreate this. So today we're gonna be recreating this animation uh, that was for our pattern plastic material collection. And uh, so let's just jump into Cinema 4D and Chad, you just need to boss me around. You ready for this? Oh yes, I'd live for that. <laughs> oh good. Okay, so can you see my screen okay? Yep, I gotcha. All right, let's uh let's make this thing. First we gotta make our snake path so that we can, you know, put our, our tube to go along that path. So jump into a front view. I usually just do it in the front view just because it's just gonna be uh, easier. All right. All right. And uh cool. So then just kind of like get yourself to a decent grid density, zoom maybe up in a little bit more. Uh yeah, that's probably fine. And now we're just gonna turn yeah. on some snap settings. So go ahead and turn on quantizing. Uh, that's up here, right? Yep. yep. Settings. So if you hold down settings, yeah, right in there, you want to turn on grid and work plane snapping right there. And then go back to your other uh, one and hold, hold it down to get the options just to make sure we're like in quantize. Cool. Got it. Perfect. Okay. So now if you grab your spline uh, tool, you should be seeing some sort of like snapping spline that's going to be going pen. on. All yep. right, so spline pen, and then I'm snapping to the grid here. Got it. Yep. All right, I'm and ready. Don't, and the thing is, like, don't drag out a Bezier line like Don't that. do this. Don't do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> don't. All right, so now uh, you just want to just, like, draw out your snake path. Kind of like that it. path that you had. So yeah, exactly. I'm just going to start here and then kind of zigzag it this way. Is yeah, that the idea? Well. Yep, and you just want right. to make sure they're all, like, the same so that it looks. Same even. Yep. That about right one two three that seems close okay i mean that's fine and then i'm just making 90 de 90 degree angles right yep click click yep. make sure it's the same width yep cool click click that's five across one two three four five across click click one two three four five across click and then this is symmetrical right i could just end here yeah that's fine should i do, do one like more um, it's up to you. This would be more like of a square, but it's still fine. It's up to you. Yeah. All right, let's do it. Dealer's choice. Oh. All right, so how do I end this thing? Hit enter? Uh, yeah, and then just uh, go ahead, and now we're going to like add the actual like curves to those to those 90-degree angles. So edges. go into point mode. Uh, all right, here we and are. And just select all. You can either you know, just grab yeah, them all or control A, whatever you want to do. And then uh, control A, got it. So, so then, control A, and then I think it's command A on Mac, right? To grab everything. I think so. So if you grab all of those, now usually what I'll do is I, I'm pretty lazy. So I'll just right click on any of those points and I'll just choose the, uh, uh, where is it? It's going to be chamfer. So grab chamfer. chamfer. And just click on one of those points and just drag it until it's a perfect curve. Whoa, man, you got a sensitive. Ooh. You got the Wacom. Uh, now you've just doubled it, so you have to undo okay, that. Okay, so I got to go undo. So you got to do it all in one move. It might be my Wacom that's just doing zoom it. Out. So I'm gonna... If you just zoom out, then you should be okay. I think if I hold down shift, no, that doesn't work. All right, so let's zoom out. So it's giving me more pen move. So I just want to <laughs> do it until it bends, right? Yeah, oh, you just want to do it as far as you can. I mean, you can also do it. Can right I turn in up there. this radius? Does this help? Yeah, you, no. you can actually, but you're doubling it every time that you do that. So just undo back to where you have just have flat points. Perfect. All right. And I'm you could just back. type in like a radius of like, I don't know, 1200 or something in your radius instead of having Even to drag. My, uh, I have like no, like too much sensitivity here. Okay. So you're saying I could just come over here and type it in. Yeah. It doesn't even matter. Just type in some giant number and hit apply. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that's easy. <laughs> All right. <If> you <laughs> well, have a whack I didn't realize there, you had whack -em issues, dude. Look, I got, look, I don't want to talk about it, but I got some serious whack -em issues. Okay. So crank up the radius because it really doesn't matter. It's just going to max out the radius anyway. Yeah. So yeah. that so now you have a nice little pretty uh, curve cute. and you can do this, you know, with a bunch of different shapes and like make cool little, little, you know, snaky things all over the place. All right. So then I just grabbed a tube. And the thing about when you're grabbing a tube is that, or sorry, not was a, it a, a capsule? capsule. Yeah, it was a capsule. Sorry. Okay. Um, and 
I basically just made it like really, really long and uh, just kind of like figured out, you know, okay, that looks pretty good. And then I subdivided the heck out of it. Not too much, but enough to get a ton of like height segments so that it wrapped around. Yeah. What you want to do is you want to make sure your quads are basically squares because we're going to subdivide it for the displacement later. So just kind of like subdivide it in a way with segments where you try to make the quads squares. Okay. So I'm just kind of cranking up the rotation and height segments until it's squarish. That yep. was close. And then we'll, we'll, we'll adjust the height once we get it onto the spline because we might want to change how long it is so Got that it. we're not like bunching up the quads and stuff. So if you grab a uh, spline wrap and we're just going to go ahead and spline All wrap right. that. Hit shift C spline wrap. You shift C for everything now, guys. Um, all right, spline wrap, and then the capsule goes in it, I think. Or no, no, no. The spline wrap goes under the capsule. I think. Yeah, the spline wrap goes modifier. under the capsule. That is correct. And I do know this one. You got to put the what you want to wrap on the spline. So here's spline goes into spline. Boink. Well, done. Perfect. <laughs> Looks great. Ship it. <laughs> uh, probably one of these axis things. It's just aligning the wrong way, I'm guessing. Yeah, you, you want to, I think it's like positive Y is what you have to use in this case. All right, so now, now I'm seeing what you're seeing. Like uh, you got to fix this thing, right? And you could just do that with the height. Yep. You just make it taller until it looks correct again. Ooh, there we go. Yep. And then you and can also adjust the width. Yeah, your radius was kind of almost touching, but not touching. No touching. Yeah, I would kind of get it to like, because the displacement's going to push it out a little bit too. So you want to give it a little bit of room to to work with. Okay. I feel like that's How's that? Cool. How's the squares? They're a little rectangly, but I think you'll be okay. I think you'll be fine. All right, okay. so now, um, cool, that's good. Now we need to UV it so that everything wraps the way that we want. To what, so, should I stay in front mode or can I get in real 3D land? It uh, doesn't matter, whatever you want to okay. do. Okay, right. um, boss me around, Chad. Tell me okay, what's up. So here's what I would do, like just for sanity, I would copy and paste that ca whole capsule thing and then hide one of those copies. And we're gonna, okay. that's gonna be just like to our keep master. the original. Yep. Yeah, and and then I would uh, basically hit uh, C on the capsule right there to make it editable. Yep. And now we have um, I don't know why. It, oh, click off of it maybe. Yeah. Oh. Okay, cool. It's still there. It's showing. It just kind of like wrapped up. Okay, so we're gonna unwrap our capsule. So let's grab our capsule and go into UV Edit. And uh, that's should... up here, one of these yeah. tabs, right? I'm remembering. Yep. And right now we just need to. Right now, it's like going to be really wonky how it's scaling it, you know, because it's basically like, you know, uh, a square. Yeah. So if you jump over to your right hand side of the screen and let's go into a 3D view just so we can see it a little bit better. Perfect. Let's do that. And then on the right hand side of your screen in the attribute panel where it says back, I want you to click on that. And then we're going to change that from empty canvas to UV map. And mm. you can kind of zoom in now on your on your cylinder, and you're gonna see just like how wonky oh, this is. It's like very very wonked out. So we're gonna fix that. So jump into your polygon selection tool, yep. and let's do a Control A on all of those polys. Don't and we're gonna jump down to the bottom where it says Transform right below. Yep, right there. And you could do this with a bounding box, but I kind of like to do it um, this way just because it's a little bit like, I don't know, I don't have to like drag stuff. So under scale, I want you to change that to 0.9 and then hit apply. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be... One or both? X no, and just the one, one just, just an X. And we're going to keep clicking apply until we see that our squares look square on our, on our uh, oh. object there. Just keep going, keep going, boom, 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 keep... boom, boom. All right, so once we get to something like this, that's that's pretty good. But you can see they're they're pretty freaking big right now. So now yep. change both of those scales to one point one, and obviously you can do it in like I'm doing it in ten percent increments, but you could do bigger ones if you want. But this is just for our own sanity, and just keep keep hitting apply. And you could do this with a with a bounding box and do it by hand, but I just kind of prefer to work this way because it's a little bit easier, and so. Now we're getting some good tiling. So that's looking pretty good. 
Can I go um, beyond the edge this way too? Yeah, absolutely. Keep going. Yeah. But I mean, remember that you don't want to go too far because when we put our pattern plastic on there, you don't want it to like have really tiny little bumps in all of our patterny stuff. So, so, so what's a good rule of thumb? If the, this is our entire material, then it's just about tire tiling it in a, in a way that it's not too small or too big, basically. Like, yeah, I think, I think if I look at mine, I, I can tell you where I was. I think I made it quite a bit, um, smaller than what you have i think you maybe went a little too far oh smaller like yeah like closer in like this like like keep going down keep going down i think i was like keep going down oh. yeah, somewhere like in there should work and we can always adjust it later but that's fine all right all right cool so now you have your properly uv'd uh snake or whatever we want to call this thing and the, the, all, a lot of this UV stuff's new to me. So let me let me tell anyone watching what I'm seeing. You want to keep it square, right? So there's no stretch stretching out of it. Yeah. And then you want to think about the end scale of how big your material is versus how big your object is. And then I also just wanted to come up here and check the the, the tip too because it often the caps get all messed up. But this looks great. Okay, so that's yeah, cool. I mean, it's just using the base UV from a capsule and we're just like scaling it to make it work with what we need. And luckily, the, what we're doing, we don't have to worry too much about the ends because it's kind of a repeating pattern. It looks fine. Got it. Okay, so uh, what do we do now? We got to bake this in somehow? I'll just click off of it, get back out of, get into object mode again, and you can jump back into your regular layout. And now we're ready to uh, put a material on there oh we're ready to make it look good that's my favorite part chad i know part. i know so right, go so ahead and open up your grayscale gorilla plus library i'm gonna go to my standard layout uh which is my startup not standard standards the regular my startup layout has all this redshift stuff and if you're watching too we have a youtube video on how i set all this up it, just in case if you guys want to learn how to build your own custom layout we got a little video we'll put in um, all right, so from here, I'm guessing, Chad, we put some patterned plastic on this thing. Yep, you which got was it. the whole reason this started was this video that you made for patterned plastic. Okay, so patterned plastic, yeah, we're using Redshift today. Uh, by the way, I got to turn on Redshift. You mind if I just kind of set up some basic stuff here with Redshift? Yeah, go for it. So uh, I do this every time I start from scratch. You got to go turn on Redshift. Obviously, you want to set up your output. I'm going to keep it HD for now, just because that was the original. Um, and then your Redshift tab should show up up here. If it doesn't show up, make sure you go to Edit, Preferences, uh, da -da -da -da, Renderer, Redshift, and you want to make sure this box is turned on and just leave it on. It says uh, Redshift Main Menu. Make sure this is on, and then this menu will show up. And then all of your lights and cameras and all that stuff show up here. Uh, so we're going to add lights and cameras, I'm guessing, later. But now we have some redshift going. Um, and now we're ready to put some plastic on. Okay, sorry, Chad. Um, what do you recommend we start with here? I mean, let's do something kind of crazy. Um, let you, what you pick. You pick a crazy one. Let's go with something more patterned. And then we'll try out some wacky stuff in a minute. Um, I mean, I guess they're all patterns, but let's try. I like, I love this one. Yeah, that's so a good I'm, one. I'm just going to drag it on. Okay. So before we do anything, let's go ahead and throw a redshift tag on the capsule so that we can set up all of our displacement properly. Yep. And I wanted to show you why we're doing this too. If you just add the material and you click it, um, it'll be a, like a subtle bump, but it won't be displaced. And so now we're going to set up the displacement, right? Yep. So it's under tags, uh, render tags, redshift object. You got it. And then um, I know you go to geometry, you go to override, you turn on enabled. Yeah. I turn off screen space adaptive because it slows it down a bit. Um, but that is good for really high poly stuff. But for now, I think we just do this. I've been setting minimum edge length to one. And then just leaving this up pretty high, especially with lower poly objects. Um, is that basically what you do is kind of keep these low and then crank them up as you need to? 
I kind of, I always set um, minimum edge length to zero and I force my maximum subdivisions, but it doesn't, for this, it doesn't matter. Like it's pretty, okay. it's pretty simple. So, so it's, as long as you're turning on. Polys. Yeah. So if you now at the bottom there, turn on displacement. Yeah. Here's the magic. This button. is where we will, you know, start to see um, our displacing geometry. So I think our scene scale must be pretty enormous i'm guessing so we probably go ahead and restart that ipr just to make sure that it's actually it it did just pop in and it's a really subtle so Sweet. i'm imagining um we're going to talk about scale for a moment and realize that this thing needs to be a lot smaller that's that's kind of my guess is um that's uh, fine we can we can make it work and in you know hindsight 2020 we sh we could have started with a like a more accurate scale but that's no big deal you can just grab that that tag and just increase the uh, increase the maximum displacement to something like twenty, which is basically mm -hmm. not going to limit us. And then you could bring that up to like fifteen or something. I I just don't know how big we are right now. So bring the displacement scale up to like fifteen. I think it's calculating here. Uh, oh yeah, there it goes. Now we're starting to see it. Goes. it. Yeah, fifteen Sweet. might be might be the right one. Let let me calculate this one more time here. And there it goes. Oh, right, now, yes. And here's a little trick. If you want to kind of just like visualize what the displacement's doing without looking at the actual material, if you click that little circle in your um, in your render view in the IPR, it looks like a little circle next to the, yep, this right one? there. Yep, we can go into clay mode, which is going to turn off all of the actual material and just show us the displacement, which is kind of a nice way to see like what's going on. Um, oh, I see. Then you can turn this stuff up. And it doesn't take as long to calculate, basically. Exactly, exactly. Well, it does. It does take. It takes us just as long to calculate, but you can now visualize what you're looking at without oh, gotcha. thinking like, is that the normal map that's doing that, or is that the actual displacement? So it's kind of a a nice way to do it. Uh, cool. So now I think you probably want to either you probably want to make the entire thing a little bit uh, fatter if you want to like thicken up the whole capsule. So here's yeah, a trick right. of doing that. So grab a displacer uh, modifier. All right, I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna hold Shift C, displacer, and yep. put this. I'm imagining we're putting that under the capsule. Yep, that's fine. Uh, then go ahead and jump into that displacer. I uh, accidentally set this to zero. Um, okay, so in the in this displacer, got yep. it. Good go to shading and under shader, I want you to grab a color and we're, it's just going to default to white. And mm. you can see what this is going to do is it's just going to simply just displace. Thickening. Yeah. It's just thickening it off the, off the normal there. So if you jump into object now, you can actually increase that to like, wherever, yeah, exactly. And yeah, the, the touching, but not quite touching moment. Okay. Sweet. So I think we might want to tile our texture maybe one more time. Uh, so jump into the material tag on that capsule and change yep. your uh, UV tiles from 1-1 one, one to maybe 2-2 two, two and see, see if that feels cooler. Give a little bit more detail. Yeah. It looked kind of cooler before, I think, but that's just me. Can I, can I do halves or will it screw up the tiling? You can as long as your seam is on the back, which I think it is in this case. So I think you're fine. All right, uh, cool. All right. One. So that's we looking need good. some lighting, dude. Look, yeah, dude, look. this is ugly. Uh, I can't, I can't look at this anymore. We need to some lighting, and we need uh, uh, some of that magic um, colors too, because yeah, I know yeah. you can change the colors easy, easy on this. Yep. Um, all right, what's what? What did you light it with? Was it uh, area light, HDRI? What's your? What's I your vibe? I just did it very quickly, and I used an HDRI, and I think I used one of Don't our uh, creative, it was either Creative Office or I can't, it was one of the ones in um, Creative One of those, yeah. Classic. All right, so I'll, uh, I'll just say what I'm doing here. Uh, I got a light, I got a dome light. I uh, drag the texture in the drop zone. If, you, if you're not a Plus member, you can just add up any HDRI here. Uh, if you're a Plus member, you could drag this in a drop zone. It'll automatically make um, this uh, HDRI link tag. And by the way, it, you can also do displacement um, if you're not a Plus member as well. Just follow along with any displacement material. 
and it'll do the same stuff here. Um, okay, so now that we got that, I'm going to double click on my HDRI link tag, go to my HDRIs, and type in what I type in all the time, Creative Office, <laughs> and <laughs> click on it. And uh, it'll update it in the viewport and uh, give us that that classic. Look at that. It's so good. Sweet. I love this HDRI. So then just turn off the uh, turn off the background from showing. Uh, yeah, yep. there you go. And I think I threw just a plane behind it and set it, you know, kind of far back, if I remember correctly. For um, the background. Yeah. And then I just so I'm gonna add a like... plane and then add a Z, uh, to click it to Z mode and then scale it up. And then yep. uh, I'm going to go to coordinates and move it back in Z until... I'd move it kind of far back because we don't really want it to be. We want it to have like the same vibe in the lighting, but we don't want it to like necessarily have a shadow on it. Have a shadow. Okay, yeah. that might be good. I'll probably have to tweak this uh, a little bit and make it. Yeah, a just rotate brighter. it. I would rotate it to get that light to oh. kind of come across the front of it. Yeah, this this HDRI, if you're following along, really loves to be off to the side with these big windows, and it just gives you this great contrast. Uh, is that too far up front? Should I go further? No, over? that's fine. I think it's fine. I think you just, your intensity just needs to come down a little bit. And then yeah, for um, just because, you know, you want kind of like a poppier look, I would grab another dome light and I would not put any texture on it. And we'll just use this as like a generic fill. Got it. Redshift lights, dome light. Okay. Then by default, you got like a white fill and yep, you can just dial this down. Yeah. Just kind of just like trying to get a little bit more light into the shadows without losing any of that sort of like cool look that we have and then we're gonna go ahead and jump into that plastic material because i think this could benefit from a little bit of uh subsurface so go ahead and open up that material sweet oh we can All also right, change let's... the uh the color here when we do this as well yeah, yeah. let's pick a color buddy All, All right, right so, so here we are double click opens up the nodes and where is it? Is it this one that's the color? Yep. Yeah. So go ahead and uh, pick a color. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. That's, that's good. I like that. Orangey red. Yeah. Got like it. That. That's my go-to. Yep. And then uh, close that. Right-click your base color, color swatch. Uh, in here? Nope. The color that you just made. Yep. There you go. Right-click. Right -click, copy. And then go down. Uh, you probably want to make that a little bit bigger so you can see all the attributes of your material. Oh, hold on. I'm on Windows and using a Wacom. It might take a while. <laughs> <laughs> Where it is. All right. I did it. First yeah, place. I just, I just grabbed a corner <laughs> using a Wacom. Okay. All right. Um, so now go down to subsurface. Oh, and I see. Right click and paste that color into your color. Oh, because these use the the new standard material. Yeah, they're all ready to go. They're all oh, ready to go. I did not know that. Okay, yeah, so now so... I can paste this in color paste. Yep. And, and now you just want to bring your subsurface weight up to maybe like 0.5 or something like that. And oh, then we're going maybe. to adjust the uh, the scale. So if you think about it uh, in terms of scene units, if that scale right now the light is penetrating one centimeter we know that we <laughs> kind of made a mistake and made, made it too big like really big so you probably yeah, want to change we're always talking change about that. scale um and the reason we always talk a lot about scale is because light and look you've been <laughs> <laughs> look at that guy <laughs> you've been making this argument so i'm just saying what chad's been saying for years but it's finally hitting me over the last few years on how important scale is so um look at this object <laughs> and it looks kind of like a small little toy until you put a human next to it and you realize this thing's <laughs> bigger than my house. Okay. So, um, well, the reason I'm glad scales... you did that because now we have a frame of reference, right? So we know that person is six feet tall, right? Yep. And so go back into your subsurface setting and, um, we're going to, we're going to have it penetrate maybe like one foot. So in scale, uh, if that's a centimeter, what sucks is it doesn't do the conversion for you because it says it doesn't say centimeters. So if you typed in one foot, I'm not sure if it would actually like work. Three, three or try, something. Three try or four. Do, we'll try um, typing in one FT. I'm curious if it will do the conversion. 
no okay so i would just crank that up to like 100 just to see we're just oh, up too far too far 40 20 yeah 20 i think you're right i think that's probably good so now we have a little bit of that random walk subsurface going on but i i kind of think this lighting is a little too like i don't know there's something about it that's not quite doing it for me i think we might want to rotate the light around a little bit more to the front i'm ready for this this is the chad magic i love all right we got the little tweaks coming let's go baby so we're going to tweak it over make it further off to the right no, I want to put it more in the front. So you want to like... Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, coming, yeah. We're going to we're gonna, we're gonna front light it a little bit more. More? Yeah, a little bit more. And I think um, I think it's just like way, way too bright still. So yep. let's go ahead and uh, knock down that exposure a little bit. Eh, maybe not quite that far, but pretty close. That's getting, that's getting in the world. I don't know. I kind of maybe think we should try an HDRI that has a, a few more different light sources um oh, actually that's looking pretty good actually let's go ahead and, and and knock down the um let's try a different uh setting on the uh, on the displacement i think maybe it's di displacing maybe a little too much Got so it. if you grab that tag and just have it uh maybe go down to like 15 or something 15 calculating point yeah that's better Ooh. that's better Wow. It's so, so I don't know how you do it, Chad. It's so subtle. Um, years so, and years of watching buckets and <laughs> making small adjustments. You're so staring at a screen. Yeah. Um, okay. Should I fatten this puppy up or do you like the little space here? I think you should get rid of that space and try to close that off with the, uh, with that displacer that we have on there. I think that would look cool. All right. So going into displacer and then this basically is just going to fatten it up before it gets displaced. Ooh, good. Too I would much go, room. Yeah, I, I, no, I would go until you can't see any light. Oh, it's just bare, just barely touchy. Oh, because otherwise, I think it it distracts. It's kind of distracting to me. I think that's pretty good. I think that a little bit of space is okay. Okay. Um, but now I want to try some different HDRIs because I'm not really stoked on that one. So jump into your HDR link tag and change it to preview mode so that we can audition these a little bit faster. Preview so mode. for those that don't know, HDR link has this nifty little feature under the advanced tab if you grab it and it allows you to change the resolution from a full resolution, which can load pretty, pretty fast, but still, you know, not real time and a little slow. So if you flip over to preview, now we'll be able to click through a bunch of HDRIs uh, to see what which ones look the coolest for this setting. Sweet. So I would just make those uh, small in your library there so we can see more of them. Yeah. And um, maybe just like check out the, um, try the Pro Studios Metal Volume 2. Pro Studios Metal Volume 2. I just want to see what it looks like if we start using some of these more like abstract lights. And then you're going to have to... These are a little darker. I was going to crank these up a little bit. Because it's a studio light. It's not an outdoor light. You're going to have to like... Yeah. And then just find find one that's a little, maybe has a little bit more contrast to it. Oh, that's actually not bad. Just turning so, it helped. This one. Yeah. I like this one. So go down Ooh. to the... There you go. Now it's now that's got a whole different vibe. It almost looks like like red vines, like licorice or something. Oh yeah, it's got a little that subsurface is making it kind of candy. Yeah, I like this. I like this right here. This is looking pretty good. But our background, you can see, is not really doing much for us. It's just kind of like this boring color. Yeah. So uh, I would make a new material and throw it onto that onto that plane and. I would, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to create a redshift standard material. Um, and yep. Throw it on the plane. And, and then, then we got our settings, uh, down here. Yep. So just get think? rid of, just get rid of all the reflection. We don't need any of that. Um, and for the base color, I would make it, make it kind of like a, like a orangey yellow. Um, not, I would maybe a little bit more red than yellow but somewhere yeah somewhere like in there and then maybe a little bit more saturated yeah there we <gasps> go Ooh, cute 
a little monochromatic. You might want to pull the hue a little bit like two degrees towards yellow. This way. Yeah. Just to try to bring it away from the red a little bit. But that that's nice. That's working pretty well. Yeah. How do you think of that? So because this is red, you don't want the background to be a ver a, just a brighter, darker version of it. You want it to be kind of kind of off one way or the other just a bit is that is that kind of yeah. the thought I mean you could go like a monochromatic look but if you know design is all about contrast and balancing contrast and color and yeah. for me like you could go with a complementary color you could go with like you know like a, a a sky blue or something but red is kind of difficult that way because the second you start to introduce blues it kind of gets like that weird vibration kind of look so right. I tend to stick in warm colors if my if my subject is really, really red um, or I'll do like a yellow. Uh, but then you run the risk of like, you know, creating a McDonald's. <laughs> <logo>. <laughs> you don't want to go full McDonald's. You don't want to. You can only, you know, just got to balance it, dude. Um, yeah, that's looking pretty good. Uh, let's see. What else could we do with it? Um, you need a little, it be, little look, LUT maybe? Uh, yeah, maybe. I mean, it's, it's not completely necessary but you could try it and see what it looks like i was also going to say we could try a different uh pattern too if you wanted to uh well i also never added a camera i think because this thing is so large the default camera just kind of <laughs> worked okay usually when it's really small you got to kind of dial in your zoom but i am going to add a camera because i Oh, yeah, dude. that's going to be extremely <laughs> important. So add a camera and then just like make it a gigant, like make it like a hundred millimeter. Okay, so I'm going to so, use uh, these lens tools. I always dock them in my interface. This is part of plus. If you don't have plus, you can come into your camera and go to focal length and crank it. Uh, but if you're a plus member, get these out because I, I use them all the time. You just dial in whatever lens you want and then it's applied right to your camera. Um, okay, so now, oh, there we go. That is a subtle difference because of how flat this is, but um, <laughs> it's a giant, it's a giant, so uh, big. Uh, but yeah, and now um, we could animate the offset of our UVs, and there could... we go. That's what's missing. Let's do that. Okay, yeah. so let's animate this puppy and make a loop out of it. Um, where to? Is right, that so... in the in the actual material here? Yeah. So I. I always use Signal for this sort of thing, which is our animation plugin. If you haven't heard of it, you should check it out. Oh so yeah, Signal. Let me. I'll, I'll. Let me write that down. Hold on. <laughs> you should check okay. it out, dude. <laughs> uh, where to, where to? Is it on one of these, like offset or something? I throw the Signal tag on my capsule, and oh. then um, and then we're going to have one for. Well, we'll only do the one direction right now, which I believe is going to be V, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so, so grab, grab this. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to show it to you, and you'll. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it doing. You'll have to kind of like <laughs> memorize where that line is and see if it actually does it. I'm going to turn off our geometry just for a second so I could see which way it's going. Oh, that's a good idea. And then you could, yeah. Oh, I see. I got to like remember the pattern. Right. Okay, and so. what what you could do, here's a trick that you could do. You could just open up that material uh, in the um, nodes. In the nodes, double click it. Got it. Yep. And then grab. And then click edit shader graph. Got yep. it. And publish the uh, height map out to your viewport. So drag that output of that height right over the blue square on the output node and change that to viewport and that way uh, and then close that and now you don't even need to run the ipr you can just stop the ipr and you can see it right there oh it's right here so oh, now there's, if, a, there's a tip i did not know so now i could offset oh okay so i did it right so that's the yeah, offset. You did it right. yep so now then, all we all we need we to do is hook that up thing. yep we're gonna hook that up to signal so and get it going if you have drop zone, this is why I have drop zone installed, by the way. If you have drop zone installed, you can just drag this right onto it and it'll set up a signal tag. You don't have to do the whole tag, then drag it in. It'll just make the tag for you. And then uh, I'm guessing we just set this linear mm -hmm. and then we go maximum, what, 100? I guess that'll yep. loop around if you go to 100. Yep, exactly. And then it's just a matter of how fast that is and how long your animation is. Exactly. So 
if your animation is 90 frames, that's going to be really you, fast. <laughs> and then this is 90 frames. It's going to be a fast move. So let's let's make it a little bit longer. Uh, let's go double. Is that, should, is that all right? Yeah, do it, man. 180. And then you could either type it in or you could just click match timeline. And then it'll set your end point to whatever your um, timeline is. So that way it'll loop around perfect. Or uh, technically you'll have one extra frame at the beginning and end, but then you just crop one of those off. Um, All right. So now click on your object mode. So we're getting out of poly selection mode so we can see the whole the whole thing in its in its glory. Oh, I and see. I think you zoomed. Yep, there you go. So but now you can see we're not getting completely real time here, but like it's good enough for us to be able to judge what we're looking at. Good. Um, if you think if you think that, you know, that's fast enough or too slow or too fast, whatever, you can always just adjust your signal tag and make it um, happen in longer time or shorter time, whatever you're into. Um, you can even reverse it. If you swap min max, if you don't want that it to go that direction, you can have it go that direction. I tend to like things to go left to right. It's a little bit more pleasing to the eye. Um, so there you go. Now you're all set. Now, what's great about working this way is that we didn't have to sit there and like wait for the IPR to like tell us what direction it was going, <laughs> uh, which is yeah, that would have taken not a, a good way to work. Uh, now I'm looking at the loop and I'm realizing I think it's this 1.5 that's messing up the tile. Well, you have to remember too that uh, our UVs aren't going edge to edge on our canvas. So there isn't going to be, if you wanted to perfectly tile, you'd have to line up your UVs to that canvas. Because mm. imagine, if you remember looking earlier, we our long cylinder uh, UV was kind of sitting in the middle of that canvas. So if you if you want to do it that way, we would have that's to go true, back that, in. I think that's for the back seam. I'm looking at it now just by setting this one to one. Uh, we're at, we're actually getting that perfect loop now because no matter where the seam is, it'll tile it. It it should be good. I'm I'm not seeing any pops here, uh, but let me. S I mean, it it's one of those things that you know. Yeah, it's fine. I think it's fine. I think if you wanted it, if you wanted like you know really inspect it, you would probably have to go in there and make sure that your canvases are lining up properly. But you could probably figure out what the loop where the loop point is and make it happen. Okay. Yeah, this all right. Good. So that. Um, that's it really. That's, I, I did that. I did some lighting. I think I did put a lot on it if I remember correctly. Um, right, and I'm going to yeah. hit the IPR here. I'm going to save this thing because you know, why not, uh, save project as I'm going to call this plastic, uh, tube. Put. <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> okay. And, uh, I got to turn my geometry back on. And uh, there we go. Um, any any last tweaks? Now, you put that warm LUT on that cloth tutorial we did, which mm -hmm. I loved. Um, I don't know if that if it needs a little bit of that or what 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 LUT would you? I think we with? could I think we could make that red a little bit deeper. And I think that's going to help the overall. It's look just of everything. a little bit too pale. So it's just, let's go it, into that material. Yeah. So let's grab that red and look at it because I want to see what that value is. Yeah. So under your base color, I just want you to like bring the value down to like 80, uh, 80 percent. Oh, I and see. And then it's I want you to bring the saturation up to 85 percent. We're just going to maybe a, maybe 80 on the value, like 80 instead of 78. Oh, up here. So keep the saturation. Um, yeah, and... bring the value up a little bit. Yeah, right in there. Like, that's feeling pretty good. Ooh, and... That's got a little bit more licorice to it. Yeah, that's kind of, it, it feels like it wants to be more like that for some reason. And then I think to um, make it pop a little bit more, I would brighten that background up uh, a little bit. So jumping into the plane and, and brightening up that texture. I'm not sure where it sits right now, but like bringing that up to like, uh, I don't know, like 90 or something just to give it a little bit more brightness. A little contrast. That. We want that that licorice to pop off that background a little bit more. So you could even bring that that saturation up a little bit on that plane as well and then bring the value up to like 95, which is kind of breaking PBR, but you know, this is an abstract render. There's no rules. Get those yeah. rules out of here. That's feeling okay, pretty that good. Looks, that looks good. All right. Um, 
Now, with this type of thing, are you messing with any Boca or anything? If it's this big and you don't need all that depth of field, no. uh, is this is this okay to just leave off for this one? And I know it'll speed up the render a little bit too. So, is that, yeah, is that that's right? really it. And and you know, just finding a, a really nice composition, maybe giving it a little bit more. I would actually maybe frame this out as like a square and not a um, uh, cause the, because because I didn't make like yours was maybe three or double the amount of curves that than I was. I was a lazy bum on mine. So you're saying because <laughs> it's not, um, a, it, it's more square shaped. Yeah. You frame it up yeah. more square. And also yeah, you'll want to cool. like run your uh, lens tool on that again. Cause it, it changed your field of view. Oh, so got it. Hit a hundred again and just make sure that it's right. Cool. Uh, yeah, and then I just gave it a healthy amount of padding around the sides. And, or, yeah, I always, like I always crop too tight. You're always pushing me back, which I like. I always feel like I want to get closer and closer. Mm, and no you're, you're, gotta, you're always like... Got to have some margins, man. It's like, all about you know the margins. Your, your eye breathe, dude. All right. I See, this is why I need you around, Chad. This is why I need you around. All right, this is... um. That's great. Okay, so this uh, let's check let's check the tiling. Do I have to unpublish? No, no, that publish was just for the viewport, so I don't have to mm -hmm. redo anything for this. Okay, that's cool. So let's check that. That's first frame, and then if the tiling's right, you want to check your last frame. Oh, I didn't take a snapshot. Uh, let's do that. We could take a snapshot. Yep, snapshot right there. Go back Did to it frame take zero. It? I think you have to actually tell it. You have to hit the plus. There you go. Oh, that just opened it up. So this is frame one, or frame zero, I should say. Uh, and then this is frame 180. I'm going to add that. Yep. And now oh, can... they're perfect. There you go. It's perfect. So this is a good check. I know if you've been following along for years, you know this trick. But uh, if you're new to trying to loop stuff, go to your first frame, go to your last frame, and if you set it up right, you should have exactly, this is why we have one extra overlap frame here so that we could check it. If the first frame and last frame are exact, there's a really good chance you're, you're good to go because then you just crop off that last frame and you got an infinite perfect loop. So now we this thing will just go like this forever as like a GIF or you know, who does GIFs anymore? You know, like a, let, <laughs> let Twitter just loop your dang MP4, <laughs> all right? friends or instagram um okay cool well i dude i think we did it uh you did it you just told me what to do and i you know i get all the credit because it's on my screen now but uh hey, hey wait a minute <laughs> uh that's it man any last little tweaks before we sign off no man that looks good um stop bothering me uh thank you um, no, never never uh i will call you again when you, as you stop making good stuff and i'll stop bugging you oh oh snap okay <laughs> uh all right thanks chad i appreciate it. i'm gonna go run to this thing all right see you dude see you man bye